now let's start with the motivation motivation is the drive urge or readiness of an animal to perform a specific behavior to be more precise it is the activation or stimulation of an animal to move or work toward a specific goal it is a reversible process with a causative role in animal behavior motivation is simply an animal's internal state that can elicit and direct a goal oriented behavior or can determine in what way an organism has to perform an activity this motivation is the psychic or physiological state passion or readiness of an animal for a goal oriented behavior or activity it may result in different responses in different ways in different times by the same animal for the same stimulus in other words the same stimulus will not always evoke the same response in the same organism the study of motivation mainly involves the study of the cause or driving force behind the behavior so motivation can also be regarded as the cause of a reversible and mostly short term spontaneous change in the behavior of an animal motivation is biologically significant in that it makes animal informed or aware of the occurrence of a future behavior well in advance and thereby enables them to prepare for performing it drive is an old and now obsolete concept or terminology or expression formerly used to describe a type of motivation which has a specific readiness urge or push to perform a behavior it simply implies energized behavior primary drives result from tissue needs and secondary drives from learned habits goal is the aim or objective of a particular behavior or activity upon attaining the desired goal a particular behavior normally ceases to manifest for example for aging behavior ceases once the food is located and consumed to full satisfaction similarly male copulatory behavior ceases soon after ejaculation goal oriented behavior is of three main kinds goal seeking goal achieving and goal directed goal seeking behavior is the one that is programmed to seek or search for the goal even without any explicit representation of the goal goal achieving behavior is the one that is meant for recognizing the goal it is largely determined by environmental conditions or circumstances goal directed behavior is the one which is initiated with an explicit representation of the goal so goal is instrumental in directing it the active goal searching or exploratory initial phase of a goal oriented behavior is called appetitive behavior it is followed by the less active consumatory behavior which an animal exhibits when it reaches the goal appetitive behavior normally ceases soon after reaching the goal the consumatory behavior marks the end of appetitive or searching behavior for example in many species ejaculation marks the end of male sexual behavior in other instances achieving some goal constitutes the consumatory situation for example finding a food after foraging stops the foraging behavior appetitive behavior is not relevant in many cases such as avoidance of noxious stimuli alarm response etc so also some appetitive behavior is characterized by inactivity rather than by active searching for example some predators lie in wait for the prey before an ambush every instinctive behavior has a certain level of motivation at all times this motivational value falls to the minimum once the act is performed again it traces to the high levels to repeat the behavior or activity for an animal in its natural habitat or environment life is a constant struggle against different odds such as insufficiency of food supply competition for resources predation pressure climatic extremes environmental stresses and so on most of its behavior is nicely adapted to overcome this adversities for its successful survival and reproduction this behavioral adaptability in turn depends much on its motivation for choosing the right behavior at the right time and at the right place 
This selection or choosing of motivated behavior in time and space is called decision making. The internal factors behind decision making collectively form the motivation. This motivation is the sum total of the internal factors which contribute to decision making and determine it in the way in which an animal has to behave. This does not imply that motivation and decision making are always the conscious and deliberative aspects of future behavior or occurrence of action. They can be involuntary also. Motivation accounts for the internal factors of an animal which initiate, maintain, regulate and direct behavior for a specific goal. This motivated behavior serves as a drive that ends in goal-oriented behavior and situation. Many behavioral responses associated with reproduction have a motivational element. For example, many female mammals are receptive to the mating attempt of males only during their heat period. This motive behind this may be to ensure that mating coincides with ovulation so that fertilization is almost sure to occur. It may also ensure that the production of young ones occurs at the most favorable time of the year. This kind of behavioral patterns are called biological rhythms. In many mammalian species, the heat period of the female is signaled by the swelling or color change in her genital area. The motive behind such a behavior is probably to avoid the likelihood of a male attempting to mate at other times when the female is not receptive. The signals used to bring about the change in behavior are called signal stimuli. There are two categories of motives, namely innate or biological motives and acquired or physiological motives. Biological motives results from basic needs for the food, water, sleep, etc. Whereas psychological motives are acquired and they result from experience. The major biological motives include hunger drive, thirst drive, sleep drive, sexual drive, etc. And psychological drives of human beings include curiosity about the success of career, passion to, passion to love or hate, etc. The behavioral response to a given stimulus often depends on forces from within to motivate the animal to respond in one way now and in another way later. Such internal forces, termed motives, are pushes rather than pulls. Hormones, physiological states, habits, etc. are important among them. There are four kinds of motivational systems in vertebrates, namely feeding, reproduction, fight and flight or escape. Within these major systems, several interrelated subsystems may also be present. For example, the subsystems of reproductive behavior include not only sexual behavior, but also nest building, parental care, etc. As a rule, the same stimulus does not always evoke the same response in the same animal. In other words, the same animal does not always respond to a particular stimulus in the same way, but responds very differently at different times. In some occasions, it may prey upon one of the beasts. On other occasions, it may pass by passively and mindful of the presence of its potential food. This means that there are some changes in the attitude or behavior of the lion. Since there is no difference in the external stimulus, some internal changes might have taken place in the lion. We are explaining the case of lion for a particular instance like a lion coming across with a herd of wild beasts behave differently at different times. So this means that there is some change in the attitude or behavior of the lion since there is no difference in the external stimulus. Some internal change might have taken place in the lion. This specific internal change or internal force is the motivation. Motivation is influenced or governed by several interacting factors such as external stimuli, internal stimuli, nerve stimulation, hormonal stimulation, physiological state, habits, etc. What are the features of motivation? Main features of motivation. Motivated behavior is distinguishable by the following features. Motivation is goal-oriented. 
or goal directed and its goal may be considered as a condition which leads to situation. Drive or push towards the goal is evoked by a stimulus. The motivated behavior has three distinct stages namely searching or striving phase, orientation phase and quiescence phase. These stages are typically found in feeding behavior. First one is the searching phase. Searching phase, also called striving phase, is the initial goal searching phase of appetitive behavior. During it, animals search for suitable external stimuli, which are essential for goal oriented behavior. For example, a hungry predator searches for prey, a thirsty animal searches for water, and a lustful animal searches for a meat. Usually, a searching animal will restrict its activity to a particular locality or habitat. Many animals learn to limit or restrict their search to areas where they have been previously successful. In reaching such areas, they employ various searching strategies. Random search is generally the least effective strategy because it often involves revisiting the same area several times. In predation, the best searching strategy is the one that takes into consideration the distribution of the prey. Now, let's move on to the orientation phase. Orientation phase is also called the phase of consumatory behavior or act. It is the second phase during which the behavior of animal is directed or oriented towards the goal. Eating the food after locating it in response to hunger stimulus, drinking water after locating it in response to thirst stimulus, Mating with the opposite sex after locating it in response to sexual stimulus, etc. are examples of orientation phase or consumatory behavior. Consumatory behavior brings the searching behavior to an end. Now comes the quiescence phase or the refractory period. Quiescence phase or refractory period is the final state of motivated or goal oriented behavior. During it, motivation or drive is minimal or practically nil. The appetitive and consumatory behavior of the animal do not persist and the animal will not be responsive to any further stimulus of the same goal. At the same time, it may still exhibit appetitive behavior or other goals. High level of motivation leads to appetitive or searching behavior that leads to the search for goal, locating of the goal or orientation around the goal. Attainment of the goal through consumatory behavior or fixed action plan and the motivational level falls to minimum. The motivational level falls to minimum and this quiescence phase with the refractory behavior. This motivational level falls to minimum and then that leads to quiescence phase with refractory be behavior and that leads to a rise in motivational level after a, a lapse of time. Okay. This is the schematic representation of motivated behavior. That is the high level of motivation leads to appetitive or searching behavior. That leads to search for goal and that again leads to locating the goal or orientation around the goal. Then comes the attainment of the goal through consumatory behavior or fixed action plan. That leads to the motivational level fall to minimum. And then comes the quiescence phase. Quiescence phase leads to the raise in motivational level after a lapse of time high levels of motivation that leads to high levels of motivation again the pattern of motivated feeding behavior is different in different kinds of animals in the case of grazing animals food may be available in sufficient amounts near around so that the phase of appetitive behavior or cold searching may be very brief or may be absent at the same time, the orientation phase or the phase of consumatory behavior may be prolonged. Consumatory behavior may be prolonged and uninterrupted and it may also last up to satiation. It may be followed by a quiescence phase in the case of predatory or hunting animal. Appetitive or searching behavior may be conspicuous and prolonged and the consumatory phase is always followed by a quiescence phase. 
In the case of insectivorous animals, searching phase may be prolonged and prominent and quiescence phase may be practically absent. So orientation phase may be followed not by quiescence phase but by another searching phase. After a series of such searching phases, appetitive behavior comes to an end for some time. Now let's learn about the motivational conflict. The simultaneous existence of multiple motives which may lead to contradictory pattern of behavior in an animal is known as motivational conflict. In such a situation, the animal has to choose one from several possible behavior patterns. If the competing drives include a feeling of hunger or thirst, a desire to attract a mate, a need to patrol territorial boundaries and so on. Only one of these may take precedence over the other depending upon the circumstance. When there are several competing motives, the motive to escape from danger or enemies and the behavior suited best for it almost always get the highest priority. Now changes in motivational state. Motivation is a A relatively and a reversible phenomenon in animal behavior. So the motivational state of an animal may change continuously due to external and internal changes. External or exogenous changes result from the perceptible changes in the outside world. Internal or endogenous changes are due to the behavior of the animal. In both of these cases, the motivational state of the animal changes in response to the stimuli reaching its sensory system. Now let's learn about the modes and the models of motivation. To explain the mechanism of motivation, theories have been advanced from time to time. As mentioned in the changes in motivational state, motivation is a reversible phenomenon in animal behavior. So the motivational state of an animal may change continuously due to external and internal changes. External or exogenous changes result from the perceptible changes in the outside world. Internal or endogenous changes are due to the behavior of the animal. In both of these cases, the motivational state of the animal changes in response to the stimuli reaching its sensory system. So, which are the models of motivation? To explain the mechanism of motivation, theories have been advanced from time to time. To substantiate these theories, appropriate behavioral models have been proposed by different workers. Such models of animal behavior consist of a system of interlinked hypothetical components whose coordinated functioning mimics the real behavior of animals. Of all the models, two are well known. They are the Lorentz psychohydraulic model and the Erechens model. These are now almost obsolete and hence have only historical importance but still we are going to study them or at least have a basic idea about these models. Lorentz psychohydraulic model, Gnad Lorentz proposed the psychohydraulic model also called the hydraulic model, flush toilet model or water closet model to explain his theory of action specific energy or the theory of specification action potential action specific energy and the theory of specification action potential this theory and the model could not win scientific acceptance for want of neurophysiological evidence the theory holds that sae is constantly generated in the central nerve system of animals and it represents the energy that is required for carrying out fap Though it is continuously produced, it is not freely available all the time. This is because it is held in check by some inhibitory mechanism until the appropriate sign stimulus signals its release for a particular FAP. Each FAP, FAP, FAP I'm sorry, fixed action pattern has its own ASE or the action specific energy. According to the theory of action specific energy, the mechanism of motivation involves an organized sequence of events. 
to begin with the sign stimulus is perceived by sense organs it is then transmitted to the cns as nerve impulses in response to it the cns raises the level of action specific energy high action specific energy level serves as an internal stimulus which is transmitted to the irm centering the cns the center in turn stimulates the release of action specific energy to elicit an appropriate fixed action pattern it has also been held that when the sign stimulus becomes stronger motivational level will increase with an increased accumulation of asc so lorentz model seeks to reveal the correlation between ss ss in the sense it's the sign stimulus irm innate releasing mechanism and asc that is the action specific energy and the fab or the fixed action pattern and also to explain the interaction between external and internal factors in eliciting behavior also it attempts to draw an analogy between the mechanism of animal behavior and the way in which the hydraulic flush system works in a toilet closet the major components of lorentz model are similar to those of the toilet flush system and hence the name hydraulic model they are the following continuous supply of running water from a water tap that is the source of action specific energy running water represents action specific energy there is a reservoir for storing the action specific energy that shows the stored water which shows the accumulation of action specific energy and there is a valve which shows the innate releasing mechanism which is connected with a pulley and a string is also been attached to that to that valve or the innate releasing mechanism which releases what water through the graduated trough which shows the collection of water that is the consumatory response so collection of water indicates the consumatory response which shows the outlet and the weight weight means the sign stimulus and the scale pan is also there which causes a pull or the weight which indicates the sign stimulus or external causal factor the analogy between the components of lorentz model and those of the motivation system is as follows running water represents the ase of animal behavior water tap represents the source of asc storage of water in the reservoir represents the accumulation of asc or the action specific energy and the rise in the level of water column in the reservoir represents the rise in the level of action specific energy the pressure exerted by the water column represents the motivation level as water level increase there is a corresponding raise in hydraulic pressure also this means that raise in the level of asc causes a corresponding raise in motivation level also flushing out of water from the reservoir represents neuromotor activity this outflow of water is regulated by valve and spring which represent the ir the collection of the outgoing water in the trough represents fap or consumatory behavior the opening of the valve from the flushing out of the water is accomplished by two factors namely the weight on the scale and pressure on the water column in the reservoir weight represents ss and hydraulic pressure represents the motivation level when the weight and the hydraulic pressure are much higher the valve valve would open widely and much water would be flushed out to the trough this means that when a sign stimulus is stronger and the levels of asc and the motivation are much higher the innate releasing mechanism would be more effective and the fap or consumatory behavior would be more prominent on the other hand when the weight is very low and the level and pressure on the water column falls to minimum the valve will not open and the water will not be flushed out from the reservoir this means that when other sign stimuli is weak or non existent and the levels of asc and the motivation are minimal the irm will not function and the fap or consumatory response will not take place immediately after flushing the reservoir becomes empty and further outflow of water gets suspended for some time even if the weight is much high 
and the valve is open. Outflow of water will be resumed only after the refilling of the reservoir. This means that soon after consumatory response, the level of AAC would fall to minimum, motivation would cease to exist and the animal would not respond to the same stimulus any further, however strong it might be. This stage represents the quiescence phase of motivated behavior. The hydraulic model of Lorentz is now considered untenable or not to be used. It is of historical importance only because it includes water, valve, pulley and weight but because it does not behave sufficiently like a real animal. Moreover, it does not have any feedback from previous actions which is an important aspect of animal behavior. Feeding, drinking, nest building etc. are some of the motivated behaviors influenced by what an animal has done earlier. Such feedback effects are now included under motivation models commonly called the homeostatic model. This model or also called as the homeostatic model it consists of several components of the CNS which is represented as a central link and a motor system and then the analyzer. Dutch holds that some mechanisms in the CNS monitor the composition of body fluids, mainly water level, glucose level, sodium level, potassium level, etc. An abnormal increase or decrease in any of this cause a homeostatic shift or imbalance in the animal. It serves as a stimulus and excites the central link. The excited central link activates the motor system, which in turn induces a particular pattern of behavior. The degree of motor excitation is proportional to the intensity of the excitation of the central link, which in turn is directly related to the degree of homeostatic imbalance. So, the higher the homeostatic imbalance, the higher would be the degree of excitation of the central link greater would be the activation of the motor system and much stronger would be the behavior or response of the animal. This behavior is to regain the lost balance and so it involves an interaction with the external environment, feeding, drinking, etc. example of such corrective behavior. Such a behavior stimulates the receptors within the animal. They transmit the stimulus to the analyzer which inhibits the central link through a feedback mechanism. This in turn depresses the motor system so that normalcy is maintained. This it becomes clear that there is a balanced interaction between the central link and the analyzer. There is an internal balance which excites the central link, which activates the motor system, which causes the correlative, I mean the corrective behavior, regains the internal balances that excites the analyzer, which inhibits the central link again. Its model enjoys experimental support. Several experimental data convincingly establish a close correspondence between the components of Dutch model and specific centers of brain. Miller could experimentally reveal that there is a brain center responsible for monitoring water balance with the help of sensors which can detect the osmolarity of the body fluid. Studies have made it clear that drinking behavior is governed by specific centers in the hypothalamus.